Last Friday, the world finally got the Y2K experience it deserved when millions of Windows machines went down thanks to a bad update from cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike, 8.5 million to be exact. But now, the plot has thickened, and multiple theories for why this actually happened have emerged. A. Was it just a silly mistake? B. Was it actually a cyber attack being covered up? Or C. Was it a false flag planned centuries ago by our multidimensional lizard overlords? In today's video, we'll try to find out what really happened by taking a deep dive into the technical details. But first, here's a crazy detail you need to know. On April 21st, 2010, at approximately 1400 hours, a McAfee antivirus update accidentally removed the Windows service host file and knocked millions of computers running Windows XP off the internet, causing many of them to go into an endless reboot loop. The blue screen of death shut down critical services around the world. That was 15 years ago, when Justin Bieber was only 16 years old, but it's nearly identical to the CrowdStrike disaster going on right now. Here's the crazy part though. The CTO of McAfee in 2010 was none other than George George Kurtz, the CEO of CrowdStrike today. That's quite the example of failing upwards. Now, he did just lose $300 million in paper wealth, but most importantly, we now know the embarrassing truth about how the CrowdStrike disaster actually happened, almost. It is July 22nd, 2024, and you're watching The Code Report. The creator of C++, Bjarne A. Straustrup, once said, C++ makes it harder to shoot yourself in the foot, but when you do, you blow your entire leg off. And we should have listened to him. CrowdStrike released an official statement explaining what happened. Come on, you guys. There it is, right there in front of you the whole time. You're dereferencing a null pointer. Open your eyes. The CrowdStrike Falcon sensor is software that sits in the background on your machine, looking for potential security anomalies. It contains a driver, which is the thing that actually executes code, along with a bunch of channel files, which are basically just config files, that contain rules about new potential attacks that the sensor can look for. These files are not kernel drivers and can be updated on the fly, and when CrowdStrike pushed an update to channel file 291, a logic error caused the entire system to crash. Now normally, when an application crashes, it only breaks that application running in user land or ring 3 in the CPU protection ring. No blue screen of death required, but CrowdStrike is a unique piece of software that runs within ring 0 or kernel mode, the most privileged zone around the CPU usually reserved for process scheduling and direct hardware access. Ring 0 is an area that normally only Microsofties are allowed to touch, and in order for any third party to run code here, they must receive a WHQL certification from Microsoft to verify that your code won't break 8.5 million devices and shut down the global economy. The CrowdStrike driver was WHQL certified, so it sounds like it's Microsoft's fault. Well, not so fast. What's unique about CrowdStrike is that they can make updates to those config or channel files dynamically. In this case, the driver had some kind of issue reading channel file 291, causing the entire system to fail. That's pretty much all the detail we have from official sources, but luckily there's a guy on the internet who's a professional C++ programmer, and provided a breakdown that went viral. His hypothesis was that this was a skill issue, where some engineer coded up a null pointer trying to access a memory address that doesn't exist. A simple rookie coding mistake that could have been fixed with an if statement. This tweet got a lot of traction, but since then it's been community noted, and another security researcher explains that this code is reading pointers from a table in a loop, and some are invalid. Perhaps an error parsing the configuration file left some entries uninitialized. What's kind of crazy here is that it looks like the driver code has actually been broken for a long time, and this one config file was the straw that broke the camel's back. We may not know the full truth until there's a congressional hearing, but it looks like some developer there wrote some bad code, said works on my machine, but then made the horrible mistake of deploying on a Friday. But we can't blame this one person. Programmers write bad code all the time, but a failure like this should never reach production. The Falcon sensor is not just some crappy to-do list app. When software operates in the critical path like this, there should be multiple layers of protection, quality assurance, continuous integration, the staggered rollouts, and so on. It's absolutely insane that this wasn't caught by some automated process before it killed 8.5 million computers. Heads need to roll for this, but it's not the person who wrote the code. It's an organizational failure, and it's not the first time Colonel Kurtz has been connected to a worldwide outage. He knows that real men test in production and is willing to die on that hill. The thing is, this company sells a very expensive product that very few people understand, and if you want to have an exotic car collection like this, your enterprise sales team is your high priority, not your software engineering team. F those nerds. Therefore, the most likely root cause of this disaster is just a lack of quality control at the company CrowdStrike. But another theory floating around is that this wasn't an accident, but actually the work of a foreign spy who infiltrated the company, or perhaps a rogue employee who wanted to send a message. A message that it's time to switch to the Rust programming language for Windows driver development. But the conspiracy theories go even deeper, and some think this failure is so egregious that it was actually pre-planned in advance. The World Economic Forum has made predictions about a worldwide cyber attack, and Crowd 
CrowdStrike is a World Economic Forum partner. This was all just a test run for the real cyber attack, scheduled to happen on August 12th, 2026. Most of us will already be dead by then, but if your goal is to write robust kernel drivers on Windows, you'll need to know how to problem solve like a programmer. And you can start doing that for free thanks to this video sponsor, Brilliant. Problem solving is a skill that you keep forever. Brilliant's platform will introduce you to essential programming concepts, but most importantly, the hands-on exercises will develop your brain to recognize and solve complex problems that developers need to overcome on a daily basis. Best of all, every lesson is concise and rewarding. By investing just a few minutes each day, you'll develop habits that can level up your programming skills for the rest of your life. And you can do it anywhere, even from your phone. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash fireship or scan this QR code for 20% off their premium annual subscription. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.